to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. There is that which is able to create a supply for your every need, the Word of God, and the Spirit of Truth, the Holy Spirit who helps us represent God's fullness on earth in true intimacy, partnership, and fellowship with Him. Be a part of this and join us as the servant of God, Apostle Joshua Stelman, brings to you the Word of God with simplicity and power. John 21 when Jesus resurrected the Bible says he went by the seashore and he saw Peter hallelujah and he called Peter and he said Simon Peter he said lovest thou me more than this hallelujah the secret of freedom in life is when you love the Lord don't just say love God God means many things to many people. I have a trouble with those who like saying God. God is many things to many people. Hallelujah. God means a bottle of minerals to some people. God means shoes to some people. God means a pot to some people. God means an animal. Hallelujah. But we are not just saying God. No. Hallelujah. Lord, I love you. Tonight, just say, Lord, I love you. And I'm willing to live by your word. Authentic Christianity that lives by the word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Father, we just want to say thank you for the things that you are doing in our midst. Indeed, you reveal the deep things to them that love you. And Lord, we declare that we love you. That we love you from the depths of our heart. We are not just doing church. We are not just trying to get a ministry going. But we desire you. We desire you from the depths of our heart. Hallelujah. And we want to love you. I don't know about you, but I keep loving him every time he has become my life. If he strips me off ministry today, it will not affect my love for him. Is that your testimony? He is the air I breathe. You are the air I breathe Your holy presence Living in me Holy Spirit, thank you It's my daily bread it's my daily bread. You are my daily bread. You are my daily bread. Your very word. Your very word. Spoken to me. Shaba Shaba Larabo. And I. I'm desperate for you. Say what I 
lagi I'm desperate for you Hallelujah Lord, we are desperate for you We don't just need you, we are desperate and we are not ashamed of being desperate. It's a matter of life and death. We need you, Lord. Hallelujah. I need thee, oh, I need thee. Every hour, I need thee. Come bless me now, my Savior. I come to thee. Can you sing it with revelation? I need thee, oh, I need thee. Every hour, I need thee. Come bless. Me now, my Savior. Please help me, take my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood. Just sing it unto Him. Shiva Kappa Lada Baka Prada. Lord, we are not pretending this song. On Christ the solid rock. On Christ the rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. The ground is sinking sand. Grounds of achievement, grounds of anointing, grounds of ministry, grounds of fame. This is my desire. To honor you, Lord, beat on my heart. I worship you. See, Bakabombri Anabashalaba. I give you praise. I give, I give you praise. Everything that I adore, adore. Be seen you. You're all that I adore. So I give you my heart. My soul. I give you my soul, Lord, I live for you. I live for you, for oh Every breath that I take, every moment I'm away, Lord, have your way. I give you my heart. I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I live for you. I live for you, for oh Every breath that I take, every moment I'm away. Lord, have your way. Fine as fire 
I choose to be holy, set apart for you, my master. I'm ready to do your will. Can you sing after me? Ready to do your will. I am ready to do your will. I will go, I will go, anywhere you lead me, I will go, I will go, I will go, I will go, anywhere you lead me. the voices I will go I will go anywhere you lead me I will go just the voices alone I will go I will go anywhere you lead me I will go Whatever you tell me to say I will say Whatever you tell me to do I will do This is my confession of truth Wherever you lead me yeah. I hail you, most high. I hail you, most high. Set up a set up, na ma ye na ba kari ya na 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 na. Set up a party, na 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 ma ya na ma si ka ya na na. Set up na. Maria, <laughs>
Just the voices. Ah, 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 ah. Help me worship us. Ah, ah, ah. Ah, ah, ah. of your word and I will forever sing your praise listen to me I'm ministering to you his spirit opens to me the treasures of your word I will forever sing your praise and I will sing of the wonders of your word. I will sing out for joy. I will sing of the wonders of your word. And I will forever sing your praise. Thank you, Lord. Your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word. I will forever sing your praise. Thank you, Lord, for the spirit of revelation. Your spirit. The treasures of your word. That's why, O oh Lord, sing. I will sing. I will sing of the wonders of your word. I will sing out for joy. I will sing of the wonders and I will forever sing your praise. That's my desire, Lord. And I will forever sing your praise. And I will Forever sing your praise, and I will forever sing your praise. I will forever sing your praise, and I will forever.
Thank you, Holy Spirit. The Spirit of Truth. The one who reveals. In one minute, can you just bless him? There is something happening in this atmosphere. Just bless him. Let him do what he wants to do. the sound of thunder in my spirit the lightning and thunder that characterizes majesty your majesty your majesty your majesty your majesty your majesty Just play the keyboard for me. The angel that stands before me, I saw him three years ago. And he told me his name is Zion's help. And I have not seen him in the last three years. Tonight I see this angel stand before me. The helper of Zion. And a vision is open before my eyes. I see a lampstand. A golden lampstand. the kind of vision that Zechariah saw the spirits of the prophets of old walk in this room I sense that the prophet Jeremiah walks in this room I sense it by the intuition of the spirit I sense that Paul the Apostle walks in this room. And the beloved of the Most High, John, walks in this room. I'm about to chant prophetically. I don't do this many times. I do it when a heavy unction is upon me. Just clash the cymbals with
आहे I am the Lord most high and I stand in the midst of you tonight say the spirit of the Lord for I am the Lord most high the captain of the armies of the Lord the captain of the armies of the Lord captain of the armies of the Lord I hear the sound of chariots chariots as of war chariots mighty chariots in the spirit mighty chariots and now I see them chariots of fire running as it were as a matter of urgency the northern army of the most high chariots of fire Come on, press. This is Koinonia tonight. Let every sound that you hear be of the Spirit. Let every sound that you hear be of the Spirit. For you shall see the heavens open. And you shall see the angels ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Come go with me behind the veil Come go with me behind the veil Come go with me behind the veil Come go with me 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 Come up here Come up here Behind the veil Come up here Come go with me Come go with me Come go with me Come go with me Ha. 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. El Gibor, El Elion. The multi breasted one. Yes, Lord, we thank you. For you will make us all that you desire for us to be. We expose ourselves to the fullness of your glory. Oh, 
For behold, I give you a new name, said the Spirit of God. I give you a new name. soak for a minute or two in the glory even if you don't have anything to say your stillness in the glory will not leave you the same for his glory fills this place yes I know his glory fills this place and your eyes will see him Hallelujah. Lord, you are in our midst and we thank you. We are not worshipping one who is afar. One of the blessings of Koinonia is that you know that God is real. That you draw nigh and see the reality of this person that we worship. Something will always be activated in your spirit when you draw nigh to his presence. Tonight, this auditorium is full of heaven. Hallelujah. something about the presence of God listen nothing can replace the presence of God not eloquence not the head knowledge of scripture there is nothing that can replace the intimacy of the Holy Spirit. Oh, there is such a river in this place tonight. Such a river. You'll never be the same. You may not know what the presence of God does to a man. The presence soaks and every fiber of your cell receives of that glorious presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we declare that we are the people who are serious with you. We mean business every time we show up. 
we are not interested in just having a form of godliness but that we want to be so close to you so close the bible says and enoch walked with god oh that you will know the passion in my heart for you to walk with the holy spirit that you will be a testament of what his presence can do if you will quit chasing healing and power and anointing you will find it all in his presence you will find it in his presence Bible says blessed are they that hunger and thirst it didn't say blessed are they that eat blessed are they that hunger and thirst for they shall be filled Holy Spirit I love you with the whole of my heart you anointed me to reveal you to the world how can one reveal such an awesome person the paracletos the standby the advocate the strengthener the comforter the one who makes men wonders the governor of my father's kingdom who but you is able to do wonders you are the eternal spirit of the living God when the heavens and the earth were being created you were there the one who turned the word into flesh and planted him in the womb of a virgin the one who anointed the apostles and the prophets of old the one who walks with koinonia the secret of the grace the secret of the impact the secret the one the bible calls the blessing holy spirit beyond tongues beyond gifts that you will reveal yourself to your people this platform is supposed to draw men and women into a depth of intimacy if we do not know you what message do we have to the world lord we don't want to join many people just making noise we do not want to talk about a god we do not know that he will help us know the word that he will help us know jesus for when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you in all truth he will teach you all scripture was inspired by him he is the holy ghost the blessed third person of the trinity who reveals jesus to the church and it is in partnership with him that the bride can say come it's only the spirit and the bride that tells the words to come for your awesome presence we thank you sickness cannot stand in his presence demonic oppression cannot stand everything that does not look like heaven cannot stand this is the secret of freedom and you shall intercourse with the truth and the product of that intercourse is freedom thank you thank you holy spirit I am nothing without you. 
I know this. Absolutely nothing without you. Koinonia is nothing without you. Iena is nothing without you. Our gifts are only empty gongs without you. Our knowledge of scripture is vain without your breath. You are the only one who can cause true transformation in the hearts of men. Tonight we are yielding to you. And we are walking in your love. Blessed Holy Spirit. You are not a wind. You are not a bird. You are not fire. You are not a candlestick. You are God. You are a real person that seeks to be known. Oh Lord, that you cause our eyes to see you and know you. That the product of our intimacy with you will cause us to shake the world. Thank you. In just one minute, I'd like you to just say, Holy Spirit, my heart is open. Just pray a prayer in one minute. You must be an unbeliever to be in this kind of presence and not be open to the Spirit. He's seeking a generation of men with whom he can use you don't need to be qualified you just need to be available what we have done tonight is so vital to our spiritual growth for this is the rest and the refreshing this is what prayer is get another handkerchief i'll be glad if i can have one hallelujah listen brothers and sisters let me tell you something god desires men and women who will be vessels that will carry his glory thank you it's not looking for preachers there are enough preachers in Zaria. There are enough preachers in Nigeria. Apostles, prophets. Teachers. There are many people who want to walk for God. But very few people want to walk with Him. And God is seeking men who will walk with him and know him. Can I tell you something? If you will pay the price to know him, he will make your life an awesome wonder. I cannot tell you this enough. He's not lying. If you will pay the price to take him seriously. If you stop chasing after many things and seek him, you will find everything you need. Please be seated. God bless you. Well, thank you Lord for your presence. If you don't have his presence listen to me sorry for those of you standing hallelujah you can sit anywhere you want to sit please if you want to sit on stage and you think you're comfortable and you will not be ashamed come on hallelujah there are a few chairs here i don't know if we can help the people just keep it anywhere all right we are excellent people but not foolish people when the presence of god is there let people just sit if you want to sit on the floor remove your shoes Keep it on the floor and sit down. 
take the seat and give them you know if you cannot sit on the floor that's where we were before we came here there's carpet in the auditorium don't break the stools please make sure you don't break the stools see his glory I see his glory I see his glory come down hallelujah I believe that there are four things that the Holy Spirit is emphasizing to the body of Christ please let me have your attention I believe that there are four things that the Spirit of God there are chairs here please come sit down just sit anywhere sit here the choir people are standing so some of you come and sit if you want to make yourself comfortable don't feel afraid don't feel intimidated we need to get the word into you just sit anywhere scatter yourselves around be very comfortable don't feel intimidated at all we're not so organized as to organize God out of our meeting hallelujah I believe that every true ministry that listens to the voice of the Holy Spirit should be emphasizing four things. Number one, the ministry of the Holy Spirit. There is a need for the revelation of the person of the Holy Spirit to the body of Christ. The Spirit-filled life. The Spirit-led life. Hallelujah. This is one of the major emphasis of the Holy Spirit in this season. The Spirit-filled life. That's why we teach on the ministry of the Holy Spirit. We teach on yielding to the Spirit. Because the Bible says it is they that are led by the Spirit. They are the sons of God. Hallelujah. So the spirit-filled life. The revelation of the Holy Spirit is the greatest secret we will need for the journey ahead. That's why we teach you about staying filled. We teach about tongues and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Yielding to the anointing. Yielding to the Spirit. We teach you on discernment. Flowing in the gifts of the Spirit. That aspect, that dimension of teaching must be emphasized in the body number two is the kingdom life as a second emphasis I believe that the Holy Spirit is bringing to the body the kingdom life that you understand the structure and the build up of the kingdom you understand the nature and the character of the king you understand the power of the kingdom he said for thine is the kingdom the power of that kingdom and the glory of that kingdom so we need an emphasis of the teaching of the kingdom we need to know the principles. Please, if you are writing, write this. This is so important. The principles of the kingdom. There is no hope for any Christian in the days to come who does not understand the principles of the kingdom. I assure you, there is no hope. You can be born again, but you will receive a root shock. Number three. Leadership leadership this is an emphasis that the body of christ must receive the principles of leadership do you realize that the fivefold ministry was first an administrative leadership position even before individual ministries the church of christ needs leaders we need leaders we have men of god we have very few leaders 
we need leaders the job of leaders is to lead God's people hallelujah the difference between a leader and a boss is this a boss tells you go and do it but a leader create patterns with his life the word leader comes from the word lead hallelujah we need leaders in the body of Christ not noisemakers leaders men who understand the principles of kingdom leadership the ability to guide the body and help them harness their potentials and prepare them as the army of God this will take an understanding of leadership there are very few people there are very few teachings in the body of Christ on leadership that's why we have a lawless body because there are no leaders listen can I tell you something the first leader in the Bible failed and that's what is costing the world trouble today the first leader was Adam God gave him Eve and the garden to take care of failure in leadership can cost a generation are you listening to me Nigeria is suffering today not because there are no mineral resources is failure in leadership every time a system fails god attacks the leaders that's why the bible says strike the shepherd satan does not need to strike the sheep strike the shepherd and the sheep the word shepherd is the word pastor strike the leaders if you have blind and insensitive leaders what do you expect a blind and insensitive congregation hallelujah if you have carnal and self-driven leaders listen the, the 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 issue of leadership is very important because the anointing that flows from the people oftentimes comes as an overflow of that which god gives the leaders and can i tell you something the spirit of a leader can be corrupt you can receive an anointing for healing from a leader at the same time receive the spirit of lust that's why a leader transfers the overflow of what he has are you listening to me this is the reason why leaders will be judged very strictly by God because you you cannot transfer a wrong spirit to God's people hallelujah the church of Christ is confused today because of the teachings they have received from all kinds of people sometimes people send text messages to me and say sir a man of god said this and when when of course i understand everybody has areas we are still pressing towards perfection but there are certain teachings that have misled the body one sermon can lead a whole congregation into error one sermon you know why because a leader stands as a mentor as a model as a pattern so people want to become like who they see and then many people do not understand the burden of leadership we only know the glory of leadership that you must there are some things in your life that may not matter but are not necessary because you are a leader hallelujah we need kingdom leaders in the body we have many pastors we have many people we don't need more people raising crutches we have many but what we need is patterns number four the fourth emphasis of the holy spirit that i believe that god is communicating is on the issue of financial prosperity hallelujah it's very very important without money you cannot finance the gospel without money souls will be saved souls will not be saved without money people will die hungry hallelujah one of the greatest successes of Satan before now is to mislead the body to trivialize the importance of finances Zechariah chapter 1 verse 17 hey, I'm not teaching on finances I'm just showing you the four emphasis 
to the point that every time a sermon is raised over finances we close ourselves with some religious feeling as though we are just heaven and all of that but anything that is not taught the body will not have faith for it and if they do not have faith for it they will not get it listen to me i am concerned about the finances of people because i have passion for it i am very concerned about the hundreds of graduates that will be getting out of abu in the next few weeks many of you are already afraid you don't even know what else to do with your life hallelujah i heard of someone who changed his result to go for nyc two times so that he can get the allowance you may laugh about it now it looks silly hallelujah there are more ladies going into prostitution every day tongue talking ladies some of them were leaders in their fellowships there are more armed robbers every day ravaging our cities killing people maiming people there are more jobless people every day the record is increasing there is desperate need it has slowed down the advancement of the kingdom of god preachers have become beggars on stage every message now is money 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 you know why because there is no money everything in the church has become money there's no time to build the body again because the truth is there are needs are you listening to me there are needs the men of god want to take care of their wives and their children you want to be blessed you want to get to a point one day where you can drive a car and then not have rain and can i tell you something no matter how you pretend not to care about it a day will come you will care about it are you listening to me one of the greatest deceits of satan is to make the church trivialize this this is the fourth emphasis of the holy spirit if we continue embracing poverty we will run into trouble there is going to be big disaster that is coming i assure you i assure you i know more people who have lost their salvation as a result of poverty than as a result of satan i know more ladies who have slept with managers and directors go to a shrine and ask the native doctor what is the highest need that they are meeting him for money we trivialize it we talk as if it's not an issue but then we run into trouble our parents have become slaves to all kinds of prophets today they come to our house your house make your father to sit down like a fool with all the knowledge he has had just because they want we want money this is august and the federal government has not released allocation and our parents are crying and it's affecting you the guy you said no to in january you are considering saying yes to him tomorrow because of your project more harm will be done to the body of christ if we do not embrace the blessings of the lord and see the need for it you're seated here tonight by the grace of god you're getting blessed by the keyboard the projector there's nothing here that is free except the venue so it is very important that you align with this emphasis of the spirit do not ever let satan deceive you and say you are young or say i'm spiritual my own is just heaven you will run into more trouble than you can imagine prosperity gives you focus are you listening to me when you are prosperous you can focus there are many of us our prayer request is just money 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 you go to pray for six hours and come in as if you were praying for the nations you were crying for money 
hallelujah there is nothing that discourages the faith of believers like money issues even healing does not discourage people like that do you know satan prefers a healthy church to a prosperous church because if you are healed you are healed for yourself but when you are blessed you are blessed for others hallelujah so this is the fourth emphasis of the holy spirit and it's important very important that we give it careful ear. the bible says he that has an ear let him hear what the spirit says these four go hand in hand listen whenever one is emphasized above another there will be trouble are you listening to me when you emphasize the holy spirit and anointing and power above the principles and the character of the kingdom above leadership above the ministry of the blessings of god there will be trouble at a point because when everybody is hungry to lay hands on everybody in your congregation you will need to rewrite the book of first corinthians this was the catastrophe that made paul to write first corinthians everybody was flowing in the gift of the spirit throwing everybody on the floor and paul said hold on we need to explain this and it took chapters 12 13 14 to explain the order and the operation of the spirit if you teach everybody on character the kingdom character and the kingdom now people know how to go and greet those who are mourning to greet those who have problems but you're not going to have a supernatural generation and that's a big problem because satan will soon sit in front of your congregation and help you run your service and then without leadership there will never be a means of training and raising people moses was an uncommon leader hallelujah and then without prosperity one day you come for koinonia and you just see everybody standing outside and you say what's the problem they say you are going to stand today why they are we not giving offering <laughs> hallelujah say i receive all that god has for me by the time you get to 30 years and you're about to get married and you find out that there's no money there's no hope of renting a house your emphasis in the spirit will change the things that used to matter to you will no longer matter you'll be surprised that you are sitting down and thinking and saying oh lord your father is asking you say you have been going to church since you were 21 what is the fruit you have to show for it we are dying here i'm not praying in tongues you are praying in tongues but i'm better than you yes there's no relevance of your going to church and this is what we do not want in the body there must be fruit are you listening to me that they are driving your father out of the house and then you step in and tell them there is no problem there is grace and you can salvage your family from misery there are many of our loved ones who have not been able to go to school today some of you are the only ones who were sent by your family members see if you don't have an assignment you don't need prosperity you really don't need it but when there is an assignment you desperately need the provision of god hallelujah thank you jesus tonight very quickly i'll just show you something and we'll pray zechariah chapter 4 verse 6 i had a dream this morning that changed my message i'll not share the dream because of time verse 6 I want to teach us a very big secret that God has shown me in my life and please I want you to take it seriously it's a powerful revelation and it's a very very big secret it's one of the biggest secrets of ENI it's one of the biggest secrets of koinonia it's one of the biggest secrets of my life and I'm happy that I'm having to teach it now see please look up especially for those who are preachers who have churches and fellowships here can i tell you something every time you begin to don't just teach your members anything you want to teach there is a pattern that you raise people such that they become strong are, are you listening to me if you carry your trouser and try to put it like shirt are you dressing well but is trouser required for good dressing 
are you listening to me so it's not enough to have rema and have revelation you must understand the order of that structure the bible says ensure speaking to moses that the house is built according to pattern so it's not enough there are certain teachings that are dangerous for believers until you have established them in certain truth are you listening to me the bible says laying aside these basic doctrines of the laying on of hands and of baptisms and all of these things when you are building a people you must build them when you were in primary school they built you gradually is that correct when you are spelling they put h dash s and then they say fill in the blank that was a way of building you when you were doing mathematics when you say one minus two they write equal to then they create a big box for you and you write it cannot and you took first they gave you price when you come to from one or from two if they ask you one minus two and you say it cannot you are going to get zero because they will teach you a new topic called what number line I follow me now this is how it is in the spirit so we have lopsided growths in the body a believer who just got born again you are teaching him something he cannot even connect with are you following me now he cannot relate with what you are teaching him and so you see the man of god struggling but the people are not growing hallelujah then you get to a point where the people who are supposed to be walking are big children who are still crawling hallelujah paul was surprised when at a certain time the church ought to have been matured but they were still babes in the things of god and so there is need for constructive building hallelujah it's dangerous to teach people for instance on prosperity until you've taught them on purpose are you listening to me if you have not taught people on purpose and their assignment teaching people on wealth and prosperity will destroy them because the bible says the prosperity of fools will destroy them and that's what we have going on in the body if you teach people on the miraculous without teaching them on salvation and the priorities of god and the eternal counsel of god where is the church going to you produce a bunch of hungry people who are looking for anybody to lay hands on have you seen all those kind of childish people around everybody just has anointing and calls you and says now i'm going to speak and the power of god will move and then you see somebody moving and I say i'll touch the person with one finger those people have been taught wrongly when they teach you that the purpose of the anointing is not just for show are you listening to me then you are being built according to pattern when you teach somebody on relationship and marriage without teaching the person on purpose that's a disaster now the person is going out with the lady one day you will turn and look at her and say what are we even doing confusion sets in because without vision the people perish are you listening to me you want to have a child without understanding the purpose of fatherhood the purpose of parenting see the body of christ there are courses that you study in the university you call it something 101 is that correct you study that's not all to it but that's all you need to know at that point you will meet it again maybe two or three hundred level as a continuation because it's expected that before that time you would have built on certain knowledge when you meet it you will now appreciate it are you listening to me no matter how brilliant a student is he cannot write project in hundred level even if he gets five points are you listening to me that's what happens in the body you just see somebody who got bored again two weeks now you make the person a pastor and he gets up he doesn't even know what ministry is about the person just gets up and his dream is just to get suits and he starts calling forth suits from every member and doing all kinds of things there is need for constructive building hallelujah so that we can understand what the spirit is doing i tell you something the building that is going on in this place is not haphazard topic after topic building after building sometimes you see us shift emphasis on character sometimes we shift emphasis on the anointing 
sometimes we shift emphasis on the kingdom sometimes we shift emphasis on the blessings of the lord prosperity and all of this we take a series on it sometimes you keep seeing us shift emphasis this is to be able to build believers so that you don't have a believer with a big head and a small body or a big hand to collect money and lack of discernment we need a the bible says the fivefold ministry was given not just to raise members that what the body will come into the fullness of the stature of the measure of christ hallelujah are you listening to me so very quickly i'll talk on something tonight i don't know what the topic will be let's call it grace grace zechariah chapter 4 I want to teach you on the dimension of God called the grace of God. It's not really a teaching, it's an exhortation just to touch your heart. Verse 6, And he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, saying, Let's read together, Not by, nor, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. Look up. Not by what? nor by hallelujah not by might not by power but by my spirit i think this congregation is matured enough to now receive the teachings of grace the trouble with the grace message that i've always had is that you do not teach the believers the place of kingdom responsibility when you teach people the message of grace without understanding kingdom responsibility you are going to produce a lazy church because grace will look like a license for everything are you listening to me but when you teach people and bring them to the place of responsibility then the message of grace becomes useful can i tell you something there is a factor in the life of every believer called grace grace means unmerited access uncommon favor write it unmerited access on common favor access that you do not deserve result beyond your ability beyond your prayer life beyond your fasting life beyond your knowledge of the word there is a provision in the structure of the kingdom for a believer to step into more than he can do it's called the grace of god he said not by power not by might but by my spirit it says who are thou mountain verse 7 oh great mountain see look at me there are two ways in scripture that mountains can be moved one is by faith hallelujah if thou shalt say the operation of the word of god if thou shalt say unto this mountain be thou what removed and cast into the sea but here god is showing us another key in the spirit that equally moves mountain he said who art thou mountain before zerubbabel he said before zerubbabel thou shalt be made plain hmm. He said and he shall bring forth the headstone in it with shoutings of what grace grace you get to a point in your life brothers and sisters where you will know that you need an extra factor beyond all that you know how to do you know that there are certain realms if you are to step into in the spirit it's going to be beyond your prayer life beyond your word life are you listening to me beyond you that's where the grace of god comes in hallelujah and when you understand that there is this provision in the body then it makes you appreciate god and it comforts you are you listening to me when he was talking to the church in revelation he said i know that you have little strength he said i know i am aware that your strength is small I am aware that you are trying to make sure that you walk in the reality of the righteousness of God. Are you listening to me? Isn't it comforting to know that God is aware? I am aware that although you are stubborn, you are making efforts to change. 
I am aware that you are making efforts to love me. There are habits you want to stop. God is saying, I am aware there is a factor called the grace of God. Paul speaking in 2 Corinthians. Can we turn there very quickly? 2 Corinthians chapter 15 from verse 9 and 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 15. This is what Paul has to say about his ministry. Sorry, 1 Corinthians. That's the second. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Please catch this revelation tonight. Verse 9. I believe this is also my testimony. Are you ready? Verse 9. Let's read. One to read. For I am the least of the apostles. That I am not fit to be called an apostle. Because I persecuted the church of God. Stop. Paul is saying, look. You esteem me and call me a great apostle. Yes, I pray in tongues more than ye all. Yes, I do all of these things. But Paul is saying, can I tell you the truth? There is a factor in my life I will not hide from you. It's called the grace of God. Paul said, if it were by qualification, I am the least of the apostles. You know why? Because when the other apostles were working with Jesus Christ, he was busy. Are you listening to me? There are some of you that where you are today is the grace of God. You got born again two years and you left somebody when you were drinking palm wine. The people who came to preach to you, you are the one who is getting them filled with the Holy Ghost right now. When they were stoning Stephen, Paul was still Saul. He was the one who sat down and they put the clothes. The people were angry, they removed their clothes. So that concept of removing clothes before fighting was in the Bible. It's a spirit. They removed their clothes and Paul said, bring it here. I'll protect it for you. You must kill this guy. Hallelujah. The grace of God. Let's hear what he has to say in verse 10. He said, but... Oh, I thought they were projecting it. But by the grace of God... Are you there? By the unmerited access. By the favor of God. I am what I am. Listen. Listen. He said, and his grace which was bestowed on me was not in vain. You see where the maturity of teaching comes in. He said, in that I labored more than ye all. He said, yet, yet, because there are other people that labored more than me. Yet. Brothers and sisters, can I tell you something? I have seen more people that, I've seen people that pray more than me. I know people who do vigils at least two times in a week. Have you seen ministries like that? I've seen ministries that fast and run marathon fastings for months. I've seen pastors and men of God that go around and beg. They beg God, they cry, they do everything. Sometimes when people send me text messages, I say, what is the secret of the anointing upon your life? Listen, when I saw Jesus Christ, I was not praying. Are you listening to me? I tell you sincerely from my heart. He just appeared to me by grace. Are you listening to me? The anointing that I walk in today. I don't know if I'm to quantify all my prayer life and my word life. If it will equate what I'm walking in today. How many of you have seen God do things in your life? That at the end of it, after people clap for you, you go back and you want to run away from the results you are receiving because you know that there must be another factor in that equation. Hallelujah. There are many of you who have you are not faithful in tithing, yet you don't have any financial need whatsoever. It's called the grace of God. Are you listening to me? Other people start reading, you resume half of the semester. And you get 4.1 and somebody who had collected the handout before that semester the lecturer says is their neighbor they gave him the full course the grace of god are you listening to me somebody did malpractice in your presence you did everything the person got e you got a with all the malpractice the grace of god paul said i am what i am 
hear me saints of god there is a provision in the body to help the journey of a believer not to replace your operation of the of the of of, of the kingdom are you listening to me grace is not supposed to produce a lazy congregation so why do i need to pray why do i need to fast why do i need to stay with god's word when i can tap into a provision called grace if i can sit down without preparing a sermon and god will step in are you listening to me if i can do anything and come out guiltless why do i need the grace of god when you understand the grace of god you would think it's a license to disobey god that's why paul said hold on as i'm teaching you this grace message let me balance it shall we continue in sin that grace may abound because there are many erroneous messages today that stemmed out of the revelation of grace can i tell you something friends what you see in koinonia you know that is the grace of god hallelujah the grace of god it's not because the things you hear may sometimes not be spectacular however it is the grace of god when you look at the worship team you see the grace of god when you look at everything that is happening you see the grace of god the unmerited favor unmerited access paul said look i need to tell you people something i am what i am by the grace of god listen i know men of god who to get a little result a little result they will have to the kind of result that you see and trivialize in koinonia here i know how they have to travel in the spirit and press as if they are going to die and they step into a meeting and if five people fall under the anointing they go back happy it's a reward for 40 days prayer and fasting yet you come and stand on the stage and you just say lord i bless your name and you see people listen the grace of god there is a factor are you listening to me if you get so walk conscious that you forget that there is a factor that is supposed to push you the grace of god is an exclusive act of his sovereignty are you listening to me an exclusive act of his sovereignty god does it so that no man can boast sometimes when you apply too much principles and you do things it's easy for you to think it is because of what i am doing then god surpasses what you have done and tells you can you account for this one now and you know that this is but the grace of god hallelujah there are many of you before you had certain revelations there are people praying and organizing seminars on hearing god but before you were born again you were already seeing angels your eyes was already being opened to the realm of the spirit hallelujah what spiritual principle is responsible for that the grace of god are you listening to me what i'm sharing right now as trivial as it is there are many congregations that if the minister is talking like this you see people just carrying their bible and frowning and leaving and the person is discouraged he's saying what i'm saying is it not making sense yet another person comes up and he can sit down and be cracking jokes and as he's cracking jokes hundreds and thousands of people are trooping in and they're laughing how do you explain that brothers and sisters there is a mystery in the spirit there are it's not everything that can be explained one of it is the grace of god the grace of god this has been a revelation god taught me every time i prepare for a meeting when i finish i say lord i don't even know what your standard is for this meeting talk more of saying i have prepared enough but i know i beckon how many of you have been sitting in your room and people came that you need to teach them you didn't pray you didn't prepare that one is grace and you start talking and you check and you, you are four hours you are even jotting the revelations you are bringing how many of you have been counseling certain people and the depth of insight that comes you start comparing scriptures to scripture and at the end of it you are like ah ah even you you are surprised you know you can't repeat what you just did again that's why if you are talking you you just talk as if you are answering a call you quickly put your phone on record because you know it may never come again 
are you seeing the grace of god at work in your life a lecturer is giving everybody f you just walk to the person's office and he looks at you not because he wants anything in return he just says all right we'll do something about your result you come out and you will see d or e or upgrade everything or c or something and you just look and you are surprised your handwriting is so bad yet no lecturer has ever insulted you for it you still get a somebody writes a very neat nice handwriting and gets one for it and still get e or, or c the grace of god do you know there is a factor many people don't know that there is this factor in ministry see this is the secret of sweatless ministry sweatless ministry you live your life understanding that no matter how weak you get there is a hand to hold so you don't abuse the grace of god by not performing your responsibility but you know that every time you get to the end of the road there is a hand to hold you when you walk in that consciousness the day you step out and you see somebody that day you were not prepared in quote and then you just step out and there's a bible study in your house and they say uh we have a woman of god abigail she's going to be exhorting us and that's the person announcing to you that you preach now you are contemplating where do i start from and the whole scripture goes blank let me tell you what used to happen to me when i started out in ministry sometimes i would prepare a message very nice message even me i'll admire what i prepare five minutes to the stage the whole thing will go blank i can't even remember one scripture again i said come on lord don't play with me and now they are saying we have in our midst is a rare privilege all the way from Zaria. i don't know if you celebrate the anointing while they are saying that you are struggling by yourself you are saying lord the first scripture i planned that i'll give has disappeared and when you come up suddenly you don't even know what to do then an unction come upon you suddenly you begin can i tell you something if you meet me outside koinonia i cannot quote half of the scriptures i quote on stage i assure you i only quote scriptures i can quote chapters of scripture when the grace of god comes on me it's not something i learned i don't know how it works till today the moment i handle this mic suddenly it's like the bible is open up to me that's why someone can be on stage and say there's somebody here you have headaches yeah me me that i've been praying in tongues i'm the cell leader let them know i have headache then when the person drops down you just run and come that person's faith may be small you just lay hands on you and you even be angry because you know nothing happened there is grace and unction are you listening to me unmerited access unmerited access doors that are closing for others suddenly open up for you oh we have enjoyed this in eni the grace of god this auditorium that we are using by grace we have never had to pay one naira one naira brothers and sisters it is the grace of god i'm giving you all these testimonies to give god praise are you listening to me i shared with you where we went to lagos and a plot of land was given to us in lekki how do you explain that how do you explain that somebody is busy working up all the principles of prosperity he knows somebody just gets somebody's prayer request at a platter of gold a lady is fasting and praying very pretty lady for a husband one other lady who has been a prostitute for years just gives her life to christ and somebody just says you are the one i'll marry no matter what happens they say oh god open your eyes are you blind you say i know i will still marry like that the grace of god hallelujah you go for an interview and you have third class you are even ashamed they say which school did you go to you say a oh, guy went to school none of your business where i went to no ask me useless questions here yeah, you are not the person giving me the job of first class students are making noise suddenly they look at you and there is something they say you come where are you from give me your paper and then let me tell you something i began to see the grace of god in my life in a very fearful way the things that people would do are not excelling i would come and walk upon it 
as if it's not an issue and one day god told me it's the grace of god are you listening to me unmerited access i share with you these testimonies if the ministers should share with you everybody has fearful testimonies of the grace of god many of you were here when cbn came to zaria to come and run an interview for us i don't know anybody in cbn aside from one of our members from jack there are many people passing we don't even have none of the ministers here has a complimentary card there are many people they have printed more complimentary cards than those who produce tracks but nobody has called them for administration but a man of god will be sitting down quietly and your phone is ringing and people come and say please we want you to come and bless us do you not see that this is grace the grace of god hallelujah the grace of god the favor of god paul said i am what i am by the grace of god koinonia is what it is today by the grace of almighty god there are people who hold programs on campus they even write it on the poster there will be free food now i don't say this of course you understand my heart i'm just trying to show you the grace of god there will be free food come yet at the end of it after two hours you just see somebody strolling and say sorry is this here they are holding this rosé we are sharing the grace when the grace of god when you tap into that dimension <laughs> one man of god has a ministry the name is grace dimension hallelujah when you tap into this grace are you listening to me brothers and sisters you will get more than you can ever imagine young man off your phone listen look at me hello please off your phone hmm? or go outside and answer it or put it on silent hallelujah the grace of god i know ministries and churches that have every kind of excellence you can imagine hallelujah and every member they see they snap the person because they may never see the person again they have used all kinds of publicity publicity principle including forcing you in your house they come and meet you in your house and say we are we are the evangelism unit of this ministry please you are going to come there is evening fellowship you must come to our house yet you look at another person and yet you see the increase of god hallelujah you look at a man of god on tv who is preaching and you cannot even hear him clearly you can't hear him clearly yet you turn and see the way people are so open to receive you see the loyalty of people to that grace and you say is it that this guy went to the, the, there's there's a man who speaks in, in tv every time <laughs> every time i watch the man i almost laugh it's so funny very very funny I, I can't even hear what he says sometimes yet that guy you cannot explain what it is there's one baba that that is on air honestly speaking when that guy finishes talking you just know that okay you were in a service and people bless you but even you you will not know what to bring you back the grace of god have you not seen people taking business proposals well dressed with their tie as they are entering they say go out walk out just don't and you see the person and then you see somebody goes with his jeans and they're even telling him ah but button up now look at your trouser eh, come and then they give him the job how do you explain certain things i'm teaching you this dimension because you need to activate it in your life there is this operation of the spirit called the unmerited access hallelujah i am what i am by the grace of god he said although this grace was not showered on me in that i labored more than ye all yet it is not i but the grace of god if you do not listen if you are going to work for every single thing you want to get in this life get said to die there is a factor called the dimension of god's grace that comes upon you hallelujah at every time we have a need 
a serious need and an urgent need god will always raise help us by the grace of god every time by the grace of god hallelujah we have never we have never we i i believe that we have one of the best workforce in this city in koinonia i say it with all humility the diligence of these people you wonder and say okay what are they giving you have you not seen churches that they call they say we even pay you salary we we'll pay you there is an operation of god's grace that can work in your life listen i have seen men of god who walk in depths of revelation depths of revelation depths of revelation and yet every time you see these people you never you 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 sometimes you you are just broken and you say lord i give you all the praise the grace of god what his grace can do other people are trying certain things trying again and again and you just step in never take for granted when you see certain ease in your life is grace the day god takes away that grace you will be shocked hallelujah i have never struggled to flow in the spirit sometimes when i hear people with all due respect in tv teaching different ways to flow in the anointing i'm not aware of what they are talking about i really cannot even understand it's very complicated have you not seen many schools of the prophets they gather people who want to be prophets and you see how hard they make it immediately they finish you come and stand here then you try and prophesy what are you seeing you say not yet they say we all activate it somebody comes from the wilderness with no teaching whatsoever suddenly begins to see the names of people on everybody's head how do you explain that are you listening to me have you have you not seen some preachers that didn't go to school they don't have anything never read any concordance yet when you hear them you know that this insight is not from a man it must have been from god hallelujah a man is sitting down and moving you who loves god you are trying and say lord please appear for me and then he doesn't appear to you and one drunkard as he's taking the last beer then he sees jesus he says why are you doing this to me you are saying lord is this fear is this fair i'm shouting there i'm, I'm shouting in my room 10 days prayer and fasting now somebody just finished or someone who just finished Cain, listen we, people are crying about the voice of god Cain killed his brother and had the voice of God. He just finished killing his brother and he had the voice of God. Cain. He said, am I my brother's keeper? If you hear the voice of God, you say, Lord, I thank you. It's such a privilege. But Cain said, am I my brother's keeper? In other words, to hell with your voice. Hallelujah the grace of god say after me the grace of god giving me more that i deserve the grace of god when you believe in that and you activate it in your life before i got to know many principles on leadership on ministry on finances on all of these things i was stepping into other blessings already when i knew these principles i knew i didn't obey them so i wonder why certain anointings came the grace of god are you listening to me there is that provision for a believer where you activate the grace there are people who don't pray every day they don't do anything yet they never fall sick they don't rebuke any devil for anything they are staying in a in in a room with somebody who is a witch yet the witch never ever thinks of doing anything to the person you are not doing anything you are loved by everybody you look for trouble right now somebody is dressing well they are not looking at the person you you don't dress well and people are rushing to help you fix the dressing well and the person who is dressing well is saying look at me at least grace the grace of god I am what I am. He said, not by power, not by might. Are you listening to me now? You will get to that point in your life 
where it is the grace of God that will continue the journey are you listening to me a ministry can sit down and be saying okay let's contribute and raise money for land and somebody is sitting down and members have not even come for the ministry yet somebody will come and give him 10 hectares of land how do you explain that brothers and sisters a father and a mother are sitting down quietly in their house and empty and comes to beg them and say we want to put a mast are you listening to me you have read every business book you know how to read someone is sitting and they come to put a mass and they say no we'll rent our land and now they begin to rent it three hundred thousand every month for the rest of their lives are you listening to me you just finished school and even before you finish a woman meets you and says uh, I'm going to be commissioner. Come, you'll be my personal assistant. And now you are saying, Ma, I don't know anything. You say, No problem. I'll give you the appointment and they'll train you. I want, I want you to begin to step in this level of grace. I don't like giving my testimonies because I, I always like Jesus Christ alone being glorified. But if I share with you some testimonies, it will humble you. That's why I always like Jesus Christ being exalted. The grace of God. Hallelujah. Can I tell you something? How does this grace come? Although it is a gift, one of the things that the body is not taught is how this grace comes. And how it is multiplied do you know that this grace can be multiplied the bible tells us that grace and peace be multiplied unto us he said how through the knowledge hallelujah the coming of this grace happens as god's gift to you but the multiplication of this grace is your reward for knowing god every time you press into god he leaves you with the reward of that grace otherwise your pursuit for God is useless. What will be the difference between you and somebody who is not seeking God? Are you listening to me? The presence of God is the key to multiplied grace. He said grace and peace be multiplied unto you. How? Through the knowledge. So as I press towards God, as you come here, one of the consolations of seeking God is that you walk in increased grace have you seen somebody come out of the presence of god and you just look at the person and you like to share your food with the person you even like the person you are driving everybody from your room but the person comes and says i'm looking for a room before the person finishes, say please i want you to come and stay here hallelujah you are struggling looking for room someone who click room of two and come and present it to somebody as a gift in your presence the grace of god grace and peace say it after me grace and peace is multiplied as i seek to know more of god this is the part that is not taught believers so we just sit down and say grace grace you can have a measure of grace but you can let me show, show you a scripture we'll soon round up quickly second peter chapter one verse two second peter sorry Aaron, i'm i'll still use you don't run hallelujah second peter chapter one if you are there say amen verse two grace and peace be multiplied unto you amplified through the knowledge through the knowledge so the more of god that you know he will leave you with this residue of grace as a testimony that you truly seek him hallelujah so you can grow in grace you can get to a point where you become a fearful wonder this is one of the greatest secrets of koinonia listen we concentrate on seeking god you know why the bible says seek first the kingdom 
and all other things because as you seek the kingdom that symbol of his grace will compel things to follow you as busy as we are we never try to let things occupy the place of his presence because that's the place of grace grace appears as unction grace appears as insight grace appears as the compelling power of the spirit grace appears as prosperity grace appears as the blessings of god grace and peace i'm teaching you a big secret through the knowledge suddenly you see that you are coming out of the presence of god and men seek to bless you men seek to bless you can i tell you something with all humility there is no 24 hour that passes that somebody does not bless me i say it truly every day of my life every day of my life every day of my life including today grace and peace is multiplied through the knowledge through the knowledge through the knowledge grace makes life easy for you because you step into the blessings of the lord you step into the peace of the lord the word grace and peace that peace there is shalom prosperity grace the favor of god be multiplied unto you brothers and sisters can i tell you something when you begin to walk in this grace you will be afraid of yourself because the results you will begin to command will make you afraid it's not because of your age it's not because of your status are you listening to me if they ask you why and you can explain it is not yet grace if it is grace you will lack an explanation you will lack an explanation i truly know that god anointed me by grace the dimensions of the spirit that he brings sometimes i'm as amazed as the people looking the miracles that come as i'm, I'm as amazed as the people hallelujah my job is to seek his presence to seek him and suddenly i turn back and i see that there is a new level of grace it didn't say grace be added it said grace be multiplied two times four is two times two is what two times three is what two times four is what multiplication suddenly you look at a man and you see the grace of god upon his life in a way that you cannot explain the grace of god appears as increased wisdom the grace of god appears as increased insight you're just sitting down the scriptures open up unto you you cannot explain you cannot even explain how the scripture god opened suddenly you begin to walk in unusual insights you begin to walk in levels of the anointing that you cannot explain suddenly you step into i know many prosperous people who don't know many business rules they don't even know how they got into their blessing that's why they can't teach you they tell you go to someone else to teach you honestly there are things today i cannot teach you i'll be a bad teacher if i teach you because i got it entirely by grace other people can make noise about it but for me oh my own came absolutely by grace that's why when people are talking i just keep quiet because i know my own is grace hallelujah I was sitting when someone came from Mina with a letter. They are organizing a minister's conference. Most of the prominent ministers in this country will be meeting in, in, in Mina. Hallelujah. And he just brought a letter that our church argued for one week that you are going to be the speaker. I said, how do you explain this? You want to teach people who, are, who gave birth to ministries that trained me and built me. How do, what do you say? It's called grace. It's not ministry experience. This one is grace. When you have the opportunity to teach your fathers, it's called what? Grace. 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 Please, I want you to believe this. Grace. Hallelujah. I got a call some days ago and the person called me and he said are you joshua selman i said yes he said koinonia he said yes he said i listened to one of your message he said the lord led me to give you two plots of land 
I said, who are you? He said, it's not important. Brothers and sisters, how do you explain this? Don't say it's because you're a man of God. No, no. This is what I want you to see. It's not because of that. Grace. Say after me, grace. Grace. Where God opens doors for you that you cannot explain. I was sitting quietly in my house. Someone came with a generator that is also an inverter. A very mighty, gigantic generator and said it's a seed. How do you explain this? Please, I hope I don't sound arrogant. I'm sorry if I do. I just want you to hear these testimonies to provoke you. That there is a dimension of grace that you can step into. The hand of the Lord. The wisdom of God. uncommon levels of insight where God will lead you to things, lead you to places God will make people to serve you that you cannot explain are you listening to me? every time every time you seek him grace and peace is multiplied but let me tell you when this dimension comes into your life does that mean I don't study my bible? does that mean I don't stay in the presence of God? Does that mean I will not be diligent with the understanding of God's principles? No. You see why we taught that before teaching the message of grace? Because a lot of people just say, ah, it's a license for laziness. So you don't read your book in class say, no problem, grace will speak for me. No, sit down and read. Do well. Are you listening to me? But I want you to know that the beauty of Christianity is that there is grace. The grace of God. The wisdom of God. You're sitting down and certain blessings just step in to come and meet you. Listen, I want you to believe what I'm sharing with you. You need it in this wicked Nigeria that we live in. You need the grace of God. Paul said, I am what I am. Everybody say it. I am what I am. By the grace of God. So the more we see God, many of you don't know what happens to you when you stand in this atmosphere of worship. As you are standing, you may not feel anything, but grace is being multiplied. Grace. The time you would have spent doing something else while you are worshiping God, grace is multiplied unto you. Grace is multiplied. Never take the presence of God as a waste of time. One day of favor will give you what a lifetime of labor will not give you for 430 years they were in captivity in one day they spoiled the egyptians they left with gold they left with everything one day are you listening to me one day of god's uncommon grace unusual grace where the hand of god comes upon your life You must believe in this grace dimension. You must believe that there is a walking. This is what, see, God planned that your life will be easy. That's why he added grace. Without grace, boy, life is difficult. There are people that struggle in ministry, struggle in every area of life. Realize that as a believer, you can tap into the grace of God. Many of our parents do not know this. When they sack them, they say, hey, hey, life has finished. Hold on. There is a fountain of grace. There is a fountain of grace. Have you seen that there are many people, this is why many times when God wants you to step into certain blessings, he causes you to begin to worship and praise him. He says, forget about the problem. You are multiplying grace every time you are doing that. Suddenly, the dimension of grace you have cannot give you the result. So God says, leave that trouble. Come worship me now you are dancing you are sweating you are dancing you are sweating you don't even know what is happening the moment grace multiplied grace multiplied grace is multiplied suddenly you step out and your miracle is waiting right in front of you you cannot explain it the grace of god Do you believe what I'm teaching you? We are going to pray. I know we're out of time. But I need you to step into this dimension. Where your life becomes a fearful epistle.
whistle of testimonies that not even you can attest to that when people hear they say it's a lie it's not true it's a lie it's not true i told god i said lord one of the things you will do in my life is to make my life an epistle of wonder there are some people who are the signs and wonders they don't do it i and the children that the lord has given me we are for signs and wonders where god will produce amazing things in your life brothers and sisters watch out you will see the operation of grace in the lives of people in this place that will make you fear are you listening to me by the grace of god we don't stage manage testimonies here you will hear testimonies that will cause you testimonies that will make you fear the grace of god you apply for a scholarship late you are the only one who will get it they say what did you do you enter the, the 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 interview hall you were not even concentrating you are sure of only 16 questions you answered correctly but you are the only person they call how can you explain this grace i give you a name to the mystery you have been seeing in your life that you cannot understand it's called the grace of god so every time you come for koinonia one of the things that god does in your life is what he multiplies grace this is one big secret in my life you never get me too busy to be out of the presence of god it has become my life i will die grace the grace of god can end one captivity captivity for years in your family in one day don't you undermine the power of grace are you listening to me somebody can come from nowhere and say he wants to marry your sister no prayer no laying on of hands no sowing of seed he just says a captivity someone will come and get a car key and give your father or just come and take a house build a house and say sir the lord told me this that i should sow it to you if you do not believe in this dimension of christianity you'll be in for a rude shock we're going to pray rise up on your feet this is the message the Lord gave me tonight. The end of teachings and admonitions and buildings is that the word of God begins to produce results. You are encouraged when your Christianity bears fruit. Grace. It says you will conquer the mountain at the shout of grace. Grace. Go ahead and say, Lord, I activate your unmerited access. I've gotten the things I deserve let me get the ones i do not deserve doors of ministry doors of blessings and prosperity grace and peace paul said i am what i am pray you will get it god is not playing games with you pray we'll soon be out of here but pray you're not wasting your time hallelujah pick your bibles deuteronomy chapter 6 let me show you something oh there is this operation in the kingdom of god deuteronomy chapter 6 i hope we have believers in this place Deuteronomy chapter 6. Are you there? Verse 10. I don't know about you, but every time I see any blessing that looks like mine, I will receive it with faith in my spirit. People may laugh at you. They will not laugh at you when you, they see the result. The end of every argument is results. Verse 10. Are you there? And it shall be when the Lord thy God shall have brought thee into the land which is sword to your fathers to abraham to isaac and to jacob read on to give thee great and goodly cities which thou buildest not stop is it in your bible is it in your bible it's not in your lecture note it's in the word of god that cannot fail there is that provision in the word of god next verse 11 are you ready to read one to read and houses full of good things which thou feelest not and wells dig which thou diggest not
vineyards and olive trees which thou plantest not when thou shall have eaten and food. hold on wells you didn't dig well can be anything boy oil well gas well anything well is well whatever name your faith gives well don't just say these people are excited no we are serious people we are making our boast in the lord that this is the heritage of the sons in light we are not irresponsible people we are not lazy people we will not neglect the place of responsibility but can you lift up your voice tonight and speak this scripture say lord this is in your word i provoke this dimension of grace my life will be an epistle of signs wonders god will do it i assure you god will do it god will do it he told me he will do it god will do it houses you did not build you will hear fearful testimonies upon this altar jobs you did not work for the mouth of the lord has spoken it his hand will establish it prosperity beyond your imagination prosperity beyond your imagination levels of grace levels of restoration levels of his oil upon your life you will step in anointings beyond your prayer life beyond your word life invitations to minister in strange places men are blessing you by grace come on prophesy say by grace i'm lifted by grace i'm anointed by grace i prosper by grace i increase by grace i enlarge by grace pray grace and peace be multiplied grace and peace be multiplied grace and peace take the word of god seriously he will show himself strong he will show himself strong grace and peace grace and peace grace opportunities by grace connections by grace lifting by grace where your life will be an epitome of grace your testimony will be grace 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 unmerited access access that i do not deserve in your job promotion by grace in ministry a new level by grace in your home hallelujah prophesy over your family say lord grace what my prayer cannot do i have tried i have prayed i have spoken the word step in the worship team has a song that they usually sing they say lord step in lord step in lord step in concerning that marriage issue let grace step in come on try grace try grace and see the wonders of grace the wonders of grace in your academics prophesy over your exam grace prophesy over your admission grace grace you have read your best you have done your best grace in the name of jesus grace you write your exams by grace you write your exams by grace for year students you finish by grace hallelujah listen without grace your christianity will be burdensome are you listening to me you can struggle and indeed you will struggle but god gives his grace 
you're going to pray one last prayer point and say lord i activate multiplied grace god told us this is a year of what great grace not just grace great grace see if you don't believe it you will keep clapping for people giving their testimonies get angry and say lord no matter what the issue is grace Take up a cost of fire, multiply grace. You can know the word of God, it can open up to you by grace, established by grace, reigning by grace, reigning by grace. Pray, I activate multiplied grace. I receive favor. I receive divine connections, divine visitations, insights, witty inventions. I ignite the fire of grace. The fire of grace. The fire of grace. Impossible things by grace. Impossible things by grace. Sweatless victory, sweatless victory, sweatless victory. I tell you, sweatless victory by grace. It happens by grace, by grace. Sweatless victory by the uncommon, unusual, inexplainable, but undeniable grace. Hallelujah. Lift your hands, everybody. I want to pray on behalf of everybody. We are praying as a family to the Lord. Lord, we are serious about your grace. We have tried many things by our efforts. But Lord, we want to see the grace dimension. Grace. Grace. Exams by grace. Business by grace. Leadership by grace sweatless ministry by grace sweatless exams by grace sweatless prosperity by grace uncommon unexplainable but undeniable favor by grace walk in that testimony in Jesus name I prophesy it into your life I prophesy it into your life from today you become an epitome of grace everyone who touches you touches you for grace hallelujah it is the grace of god that brings what we call the mystery of sufficiency he said and god is able to make all grace abound towards you so that ye having all sufficiency unto all things may abound unto every good work it is the grace of god that uncovers the mystery of supply sufficiency that you cannot explain that's the grace that was activated when the cruise of oil could not run dry the mystery of sufficiency is activated by grace he said and god is able to cause all kinds of grace to abound in the name that is above all names i activate that grace for supply and sufficiency in your finances in every area of your life in the name of Jesus that by the grace of God your missing scripts will be found the mistakes in your results will be corrected your course will be waived by grace by grace by grace what a man cannot do, God can do it. If he cannot do it, he is not God. Lord, we thank you for your grace. Upon Koinonia, we command a baptism of grace. Upon ENI, we command grace. Fearful testimonies by grace. In the name of Jesus. And Lord, we will give you all the glory. By grace. In the name of Jesus. If you believe this give God a shout of praise I believe it with all my heart 
I believe it with all my heart. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. All through this week, I'd like you to walk with that consciousness of grace. Are you listening to me? That the grace of God is at work. As you are studying your Bible, don't say I've not entered this level of the spirit. No, there is grace. Every time anybody tells you you cannot, say yes by myself. However, there is a factor. Grace. Every time you stand before any mountain, don't shout your name. Shout grace. Grace. Hallelujah. This week you will come back next Koinonia with testimonies that will make you afraid. I assure you. Mind-blowing testimonies. I want you to walk into it. My own is already happening to me. I will package them first, then I will share it one day. I will come out among those who are giving testimonies and I'll beg for 10 minutes. You must activate things in the spirit. They don't happen automatically. Grace. Are you listening to me? He and I too will have our own testimony. When you see plenty buses outside, plenty cars, plenty lands, plenty equipment from unknown people, there is a name it's called grace. Some of you will never believe it until you see it. You say, hey, and they said it. Don't be those kinds of people. Receive it and personalize it and walk in it. Lord, we give you praise for your word. We believe your word. You are not a man that you should lie, nor the son of man that you should repent. You have spoken and you will perform. We thank you and we trust you. Our hearts will rejoice and will give you all the glory. For with all the fruits of grace, we will advance your kingdom. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Every, our lives on earth are governed by times and seasons. Hallelujah. The Bible says he made some lights to regulate times and seasons. Hallelujah. And we function in this earth realm with the understanding of times and seasons. Although God exists in the realm of eternity. But when he relates with man, he relates with man in time. That's why the Bible says in the 50th year, in the second month of this, God did this. When the prophet was going to prophesy to the woman, although he was speaking from the realm of eternity, because he was speaking to one who was in this time, he said, according to the time of life. Hallelujah. And so the Bible says the children of Issachar had an understanding of the times and they knew what to do hallelujah we need to have discernment to understand what god is doing in every season because one definition of frustration is to try to flow in an area where the spirit is not flowing the eagle has this as an understanding it will stand from the mountain top and observe the current of the wind the eagle does not fly it soars other birds fly because they try to guess the direction of the wind but the eagle stands for a while it's not in a hurry to start jumping it observes the current and then it soars and then it can rise above other ordinary birds hallelujah and we took our time by the spirit of god to hear the things that the lord would have us hear even by his grace and the lord has declared that this is a year of great grace and glory. Now, now I know that several ministries receive different words. Now, God has an agenda for the entire earth. Are you listening to me? And then he has an agenda for continents. Are you following me now? And then he has an agenda for territories. So there is the agenda of God for the world, for mankind. There is the agenda of God for the continent of Africa. Africa has a role to play. Are you following me now? There is an agenda for Nigeria in this season. Are you following me now? And then every ministry that names the name of Christ has an agenda. And so it's the job and the responsibility of the leaders to find out. It's not just a word 
and say we're not saying this is what god is doing all over the earth necessarily we're saying that this is how he would love us to position ourselves to fit into the big picture of prophecy that he will be bringing and so you find out that different words can come from different ministries although i am aware that there are people who just sit down and browse the internet for the number 12 and then they say this is a year of uh, government or something you see um while it is good that we bring out prophetic things it's important that we don't guess what we feel god is saying it's important we stay real time in his presence and hear what he's saying he said that which i tell you in the secret declare thou on the mountain top he said he will not do anything but reveal his secrets to his servants and prophets the secret things of the lord are with them that fear him and he will show them his covenants hallelujah he said if you seek me early you will find me and so God has given us this word and when people receive words like this the first thing we do is to jump and to celebrate and, and that's wonderful but if you have been here for a while you understand that we are not just people who jump at promises we are always positioned to find out how we will align ourselves with prophecy let me tell you something about prophecy before you sit down you see the bible prophesied that someone was going to betray jesus he didn't mention the name of any man the bible says that he will be given birth to by a virgin he didn't call mary are you listening to me he said he will ride upon a donkey he didn't call the name of any man you see prophecy is such that when it comes to this earth realm it begins to scan for human vessels who can align with the condition to make that prophecy come to pass are you following me now and so prophecy is not automatic that it means that is going no if god declares a word and says i intend to bless you that word begins to find those who fit the condition for its manifestation it goes around the entire earth looking for those who posture themselves are you listening to me and so it is possible mary would have violated that's why permission was asked from her before she got pregnant the angel came to seek permission if she refused the word will look for another virgin jesus would still have been born because no man played his fatherly role and so it really wouldn't have mattered so much who played the motherly role because he still wouldn't come with the blood of mankind hallelujah are you following me now and so when god gives prophecy it's not just it's not just to receive and jump no no that's the reason why you can have a vision for instance and see that god is healing one person and then you find out that 20 people will come they are positioned themselves to enter the reality of that prophecy hallelujah he, he was he was brought to heal the nation of israel and then a gentle woman came and positioned herself and said even the dogs eat from the crumbs and she forced herself into that prophecy are you following me now and so when we when prophecies are released that's not the time to just rejoice it's the time to align hallelujah it's the time to align and tonight will not be taking so much time i'll just share to prepare our hearts and then we pray hallelujah ah, ah, elohim. Elohim Madonna. Ah, elohim. Elohim Madonna. Haggai Haggai chapter 2 Haggai chapter 2 
verse 6. Haggai chapter 2 verse 6. For thus saith the Lord of hosts. That name there is El Elyon. Listen, hold on, stop. I need to explain to you, every time God is speaking, don't just observe what he's saying, observe what dimension of him is speaking. There are times that he speaks as El Shaddai. There are times he speaks as El Elyon. There are times he speaks as Yahweh. The dimension he's speaking tells you the gravity of what he's trying to communicate. And he said, Thus saith the Lord of hosts. The word there is El Elyon. Hallelujah. El Elyon. Every time he uses the name El Elyon, he's about to speak over something that has to do with men who have been contending in the earth. The Lord of hosts, El Elyon. Now El Elyon is speaking. He said, Yes, yet once it is a while. And I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land. And I will shake all nations and the desire of all nations shall come. And I will fill this house. There is a particular house, not every house. I will fill this house with glory, saith the Lord of hosts. Hmm. Verse 8. The silver is mine. And the gold is mine, saith the Lord of hosts. Verse 9, let's read together. The glory of this latter house shall be greater than the glory of the former. And in this place I will give peace. Now, the word peace there is not just quietness and rest. The word peace there is shalom. Hallelujah. It means prosperity. It means deliverance. It means blessings. Are you following me now? There's something the Jewish people had called the covenant of peace. It wasn't just the covenant, it was a covenant of health, covenant of prosperity, covenant of well-being. And so God is saying, because my glory will fill this place, I will cause that shalom, prosperity, health, blessings, and everything that I represent. The word glory is from the Hebrew word kabod. The Greek is doxa. It means the weightiness, the full presence. The true essence and the nature of a person or a thing and God is saying every time my true person my glory the weight of all that I am and all that I represent fills a place and a people they will experience Shalom the peace of God that passes all understanding the quietness and rest hallelujah and so God is set to glorify you this year God is set to bring an ornament of glory upon your life that will shock you. I love speaking at the first meetings of every year because at the end of the year you will listen and then you will see the sequence of the manifestations of the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. I love it so much when things are declared before they happen. That's why God will oftentimes speak so that men will try to stop him and then he will ride in his majesty and do it all the same. And you say, I am proving to you that I am Lord. He's the only one who is not afraid. You know, we're always, if you are building, you say, don't tell anybody until the house is complete. God will say, this is what I want to do. Do your worst. So long as you align, I can do it. Every factor notwithstanding. Hmm. Hallelujah. And so it's God's desire that we will walk in not just glory, great glory. Great glory hallelujah that we will walk in levels of god's life the fullness of the kingdom life with power and authority and we will legislate on behalf of heaven i'm telling you i'm excited about 2012 not because it's the beginning of the year you know every year you were excited about last year you know <laughs> for many of you say last year thank you you went don't ever come back again but this is quite a year hallelujah it's so significant that even the Mayans in ancient time had something to say about this year, 2012. The eyes of many soothsayers, voodoo, yoga, all over the world, their eyes has been on 2012. There's something significant about this year. And it will unfold as we see. For many people, they are afraid because of the year, the way the year is starting and all of that. And... Um, I bring you a word of encouragement, fear not. The Lord is not wondering what to do from heaven. 
he's not holding an emergency meeting to say are you seeing what is going on in this country called nigeria what for god's sake do we do he is king of kings there is nothing called future in his presence what we call our future is his past and so when he speaks he speaks from that realm of dominion when he tells you all things are all right trust him we are yet to see our future but he has gone there and come back he exists in that span he's not called alpha and omega he's called alpha omega he's at the beginning and at the end at the same time and it is from that perspective that he tells you everything is all right he says say unto the righteous it shall be well say unto the righteous hallelujah be seated in god's presence thank you good to see everyone we're really looking beautiful handsome wonderful glorious colorful bright i hope that this is how you'll be smiling when we're holding our last service for this year you know it's amazing how people start new year with all kinds of big and joy and when we're dancing for the final service we just say god thank you ah! did i survive say lord let it not come back again but this is a year that you will miss it so much when you are going into 2013 thank you jesus hallelujah i'll be speaking briefly on dimensions of grace second peter chapter two chapter one really second peter chapter one dimensions of grace thank you lord dimensions of grace we'll be exploring the revelation of God's grace trying to understand the concept of grace hallelujah since God has declared that this is a year of great grace and glory it's important for us to understand what grace is and the requirements for grace and I'll be speaking really briefly hallelujah verse 2 let's read together second peter one are you there say amen. amen i hope you bought a new bible this year listen you, you must make some resolutions under the anointing of the spirit this year no more burnt bibles that half of it was burned with fire and you take a um, bible that you received when you were doing evangelism you know in secondary school fcs brought it for you you put it in your pocket you, you, this is a year to grow say myself grow up all right let's continue verse two let's read together one to read stop grace and peace be what be multiplied hallelujah this is an epistle that peter is writing to the church he said grace be multiplied grace be multiplied oftentimes paul will start his epistles by saying grace grace have you read that in your bible grace be unto you and peace from our lord jesus christ grace 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 and here peter is saying grace be multiplied so there's a mystery that the ancient knew and they understood about the grace of god grace be multiplied unto you hallelujah and so we are, we've established from the word of god that god's grace can be multiplied grace can be multiplied but what is this grace really when we talk about grace when people meet you and say kai you are making it in this life where it's god's grace so oh. and many believers don't even know what we are talking about what is grace hallelujah tonight i choose to be very simple and straight and direct to the point we are just starting we have other meetings where we have the opportunity to trash things out but one of my goals this year is to make the gospel as simple plain basic and as applicable as it can be are you following me now the end of every revelation is application that you can receive and apply it hallelujah what is grace and i'm talking about dimensions of grace and so from the definition i'm going to open us up to um, a twofold working of grace that we'll be considering hallelujah generally speaking grace talks about god's unmerited access talks about um 
unmerited access an access that is given unto you that you do not merit that you did not work for are you listening to me very very important revelation chapter 3 verse 8 says i set before you an open door you didn't open it by yourself i set before you an open door he said no man can shut it hallelujah and so the grace of god talks about his unmerited access his ability that comes in to cover for your inadequacies hallelujah where god steps in to do above and beyond what your efforts can do the grace of god hallelujah that's the general definition that um many believers and many christian circles know about grace hallelujah another word for grace based on that definition or another dimension of grace is called favor hallelujah that's what i just defined for you so if you're writing you can write favor grace is the manifestation of the favor of god in your life that he shows you favor he brings to you something that uh, blessings and riches and positions that you do not merit hallelujah but the second dimension of grace that i'll also be teaching is god's divine enablement write it god's divine enablement god's divine enablement that causes you to do things and accomplish things far beyond your effort and your capacity god's divine enablement You can call that the enablement of God. And these are the two dimensions of grace we are going to be considering tonight. Hallelujah. Every time God talks about grace, for many believers, our concept of grace is just, um, okay, God opening doors for me, you know, I will occupy houses I didn't build, collect people's cars I didn't buy, you know, and, 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 now, and now there's a dimension of that grace. It's called the favor of God. He said, Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yea, the Kairos time, the set time is come. Hallelujah. The Bible says how that when Egypt, Israel found favor in the eyes of Pharaoh and the Egyptians and they spoiled the Egyptians. They left Egypt with plenty. They left with their bounty. Hallelujah. The Bible makes us to understand how that Daniel, Joseph, Queen Esther, different people found favor. And so there is, there is a place of God's favor. Are you following me now? And so when God is saying it's a season of great grace, one of the things God is saying is that you will step into dimensions of his favor. Are you following me now? That you will experience the favor of God in an unlimited dimension even in this season. That God will bring things into your life that is beyond your prayer life. Beyond your prayer and fasting. Are you listening to me? God will bring you into certain levels of blessings and give you as an inheritance. The Bible says, for by grace you are saved. Why? Because you didn't do anything. You just responded to the grace and the mercy of God. Are you following me now? You didn't have to go and crucify yourself. So it's by the grace of God that dimension of his favor that lavishly bestows things upon you that you did not work for hallelujah but then there is a dimension of his grace that I like us to examine briefly It's called the enablement of the spirit when God tells us it's a season of great grace that's because there will be great responsibilities. Are you following me now? That means that there will be responsibilities beyond your natural human capacity. Are you listening to me? Remember when Paul prayed and he had all kinds of infirmities and challenges. What did God say? My grace is sufficient. That was not favor. My enablement. So when Paul speaks to the church here and says grace be multiplied because they were busy in the vineyard doing the works of the kingdom hallelujah great grace the enablement of the spirit there are several things that we have to do and accomplish this year by the grace of god and humanly speaking we are unable to do this let me tell you something when god gives you an assignment it will always be bigger than you and your capacity if god ever gives you anything that is equal to you that you can do be sure that was not god go back and pray 
Hallelujah. Moses, tell the people to move forward. How could God say such a thing? Do you know the audacity it takes to stand before two million people and say, ladies and gentlemen, here you go. That's your way. Those guys were not laughing. Pharaoh was behind. Moses was under pressure. Are you listening to me? So it takes the enabling grace of the spirit for you to be able to push through certain things because it will require you riding for, for many of us this year will require you breaking status quo. Status quo in your family. Certain things that have been the norm. And I tell you the truth, it will require the enablement of the spirit to take, many of us will be taking giant steps this year. Steps that you never had the audacity to take. As individuals, as ministers, will be taking steps that are humanly speaking bigger than your capacity. But when you realize that there is the great enablement of the spirit, then you say, Lord, I can take this load. It humanly looks bigger than me. How many of you have studied the lives of the ants when an ant wants to lift i hear that it's able to lift something about 50 times its size the ant has the revelation of great grace and it comes without thinking twice and just lifts the food and, and, and when you look at the ant you cannot understand where the strength is coming from you blow the ant and it will it will shift away you blow what he wants to carry and it will not shift yes the ant will come and lift it that's a spiritual mystery we must study the ants, that's why I say go to the ant, you sluggard. There's a lot to learn. Hallelujah. Many of us will be carrying weights that humanly speaking would have suppressed you to death. But you will ride it through and people will say from whence come this energy? And you say it's the great grace of God. Enablement to accomplish supernatural things. Things that you would either to be afraid of. Many of you, great grace will come upon you and you will preach the gospel and win souls like you have never done in your life. Many of you will see yourself healing people and getting people filled with the Holy Spirit. You will be surprised. The grace of God at work in you. Hallelujah. It's on account of His grace that we will experience His glory. And so we must prepare and posture ourselves. Paul is speaking I mean, Peter is speaking to the church and he says, grace be multiplied. The abundance of it. Hallelujah. He's speaking this and prophesying to them because of the things he's about to tell them. Are you following me now? Every time God wants to give you great instructions, he supplies grace. When God wants to move you to a new level and a new dimension, the first thing is not the assignment. The first thing is the enablement. The only challenge is that it takes the faith of the Son of God for us to begin to move. Because you may not even feel anything. You will not feel more anointed. You will not feel more graced. But the enablement comes with the word that has been spoken. It has nothing to do with your feelings. And then you find yourself walking in realms and dimensions and doing things that are far beyond your capacity. Hallelujah. So how many of you believe that God is lavishly releasing grace upon us even in this season? The grace that manifests as his favor in our lives. We expect to see things beyond our efforts. But that's not room enough to fold our hands and smile. And say, oh thou God of grace. Fire on. Do whatever, do what only you can do. You know, believers pray that prayer as an expression of laziness sometimes. He say, God, do what only you can do. And then God says, what of the one we can do together? This is koinonia. He said, God, I don't want, I don't want to share your glory. Do a loan and take the glory. Let me just take the blessings. What's the difference between blessings and glory? <laughs> Hallelujah. So many believers like running away from responsibilities. He said, Lord, he said, this work, I, I can't try to be God. I won't take your place. Do your thing, take your glory. Just carry me along no this, this is not a year to be carried along this is the year to participate that's why we say koinonia is intimacy and partnership hallelujah that we have a mutual partnership with divinity hallelujah grace many of us will ride over things that used to be challenges last year as if they don't exist it's called the grace of god you will hear certain things that you would have had last year and cried and you smile over it and say god is still faithful and people say what in the world is going on it's called grace the grace of God 
that your family members call you and say things are going from bad to worse in this country and you smile and say I still see that he is faithful from what dimension are you speaking the grace of God supernatural enablement your father wants to build build a house the foundation has been there for years and you tell him daddy this is the year of great grace who are thou mounting before Zerubbabel this is the time when you will fall down flat. You tell him there is. this is a year of grace. Where we will push through and accomplish things by the spirit. Eh? Where will the money come from? The grace of God. There is an enablement. Are you following me? Any of us can pray for 20 minutes. At the end of 20 minutes, you are pinching everything you can pinch around you. But there is grace for you. That you will stretch through and build. There are many people that hate times of prayer. They hate prayer meetings in this place. The moment we say tonight is a prayer day, hey, why did I come? But there is grace. He said, Quicken us and we will call upon your name. Hallelujah. Do you believe these things I'm sharing? Because that's what God is preparing us. For me, I have, I have prayed and entered into this prophecy. I told God, Lord. If people think they've seen anything about my life, brace up. You're about to see a shocker in 2012. If you think you've seen anything about ENI and Koinonia, I bring the word with audacity. This year, you will open your mouth and put your hands. Mark my words. You will see accomplishments by the Spirit. Things that no human being can take credit for. Every time you see it and men ask you, say grace. That's going to be your language this year. Grace. Grace. That every time you go to pray, your prayer will be, Lord, thank you for your grace. Thank you for grace. When they give you a task and an assignment, you say, Lord, I'm not crying. There is grace. There is an abundant supply of grace. God says, it's in this season. You will begin to partner with ministries just as you are. How will it happen? The grace. There is an enablement from heaven. It's not by your power. It's not by your might. Great grace. Hallelujah. In Acts chapter 4 verse 33. Can someone read Acts chapter 4 verse 33? Let's see what happened to the early church. Acts chapter 4 verse 33. And with great power. And with listen. He said and with great power. Gave the apostles. Okay. Witness of the resurrection. Witness of the resurrection. Of the Lord Jesus. Of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them. And great grace was upon them great grace was upon them so they began to accomplish supernatural things have you ever wondered why paul single-handedly would travel through asia minor conquering people these people will step into cities and within days they will begin to shake the foundations of those cities it's called grace grace the grace of god one man without publicity suddenly churches will begin to mobilize themselves and support him and finance him it's called grace are you listening to me when you understand the language of grace this year will you will move in a way as though satan does not exist it's called grace we were going to travel to my duguri um last last week i was there and um there was change in plans in the flight I should do so we we thought it was in the evening myself and steve strings hallelujah and we left in the afternoon to go to abuja and there take our flight and we just got to find out that we missed the flight and we needed to be there and you know you know my degree is far right really really far from my degree to lagos is a two hours drive that's the farthest distance border to border of this country hallelujah and i told the driver i said can you go to my degree and he was just looking at me who in the world will want to go to my degree on the road on a friday and i told him if you are ready let's go and we carried stiff strings we were leaving we left kano not up to an hour when the bomb blast started hallelujah and when we got to damaturu we could not we couldn't get in because of the curfew and so we got there by seven and they said we had to sleep. <laughs> we had to sleep outside i mean sleep in the car 
and I looked at Steve. I said, Steve, there's grace for us. See you in the morning. How it will happen? I mean, I tried to sleep. I woke up. I found I was just 30 minutes. I said, what? This is not funny. We're going to be here till 6, 12 straight hours. But then here and there, you know, we went through the whole hustle and bustle and we saw the grace of God. A time came we were in Damaturu and we were about to enter a place that had been earmarked as a no-go area because we didn't know. Once you enter there, military men will begin to shoot you because they believe you are terrorists. And so we entered and while we were moving, the grace of God, and people started shouting, non-believers. We noticed they started shouting at us and calling and saying, no, come back, turn, turn. And then we turned, the driver turned the car and when he came, two of them, non-Christians, came out from their car and entered our car and led us through the path until we came out to a place of safety. We didn't pay them, we didn't do anything. Are you following me? It's called what? Grace. And when we got to the police, the, the military checkpoints, it was so strict. Sometimes they would just come and look at us. And the soldiers said, oh, God. And then they would just say, pass. They couldn't explain. What do we call it? It's called grace. Hallelujah. It's called grace. The grace of God will set you apart. The grace of God will bless you and bring certain blessings to you. I think Manasseh is aware someone walked up to us and, and told us that he was going to shoulder foiling the generator for Koinonia, right? From now till the quarter of the year. And he gave a deposit and he said he's still bringing another one. What did we give him? Nothing. It's called what? Grace. Do you believe what I'm telling you? It's an enablement of the spirit. It's called grace. You step into realms of abundance. So we must embrace the multifaceted dimension of grace. Are you following me? There is a dimension that will enable you to accomplish things. But then there is only so much you can do. And there is a dimension called the favor of God. The favor of God. Where strangers will feed your flocks. And your gates will be continually open to receive the forces of the Gentiles. You will step into a place and see people beating themselves left, right and center to make way for you. And you'll be wondering, what is it? It's not about my qualification. My name doesn't even sound it. Where jobs will look for you without you applying. People will come and beckon on you and beg you. Do you believe what I'm saying? the grace of God where you'll be lying down you are not praying you are not fasting but revelations will begin to be downloaded and when you step up people will think that you have been in a place you, they think you lock yourself for 200 days but you just open the Bible and see a straight line from Genesis to Revelation it's called grace hallelujah there are many of us that you will lie down there will almost be no night you will not have a dream or see something or have direction from the spirit you will hear a voice beyond your prayer life even when you talk to somebody and say ah look at you your big head suddenly you are still hearing revelation many of you you will utilize your the notepads on your phones this year like never before because you'll become not just a talking spirit but a writing spirit god will be communicating things what to do direction by the grace of God hallelujah do you believe that supernatural accomplishment some of you will be sitting your family members will be sitting down like this and someone will just come and carry a check and say the Lord led me to sow this for the building that has been waiting and your father will say sorry you are you a number of tell me this Nigeria is corrupt and the person will say sorry I'm just acting on that instructions have a nice day the grace of God are you following now the grace of God. For many of you, the grace of God will fish you out. You will hear a report from your department. They say they are calling you. They said there was a time when something happened and uh, are you, you owe this and that and that and they'll say, come. We just found out that there was a problem. We apologize and after years. The Bible says a time came when Mordecai was good to the king but nothing happened. Then there was a day when the chronicles was opened. He called it the book of remembrance. And the king began to search and say, Ah, come on, Mordecai did this. He stopped people from killing me. Did they reward him? 
and then he called Haman. Isn't it interesting that when God wants to bless you, he uses your enemies? But Haman thought it was for himself. So his selfishness made him to give the best. He said, ah, I know what that kind of man will get. Stand upon a horse and everybody will ride. He said, this is what we'll do to Haman. And you are the one who organized it. He makes a table before me in the presence of my enemies. This is not the year to worry about enemies. This is the year to concentrate on your partnership with the king and keep moving. Let me tell you, friends, you will drip in unlimited grace. Unlimited grace. Un you will buy something from someone's shop and that day the person will see you and say, come, 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 I'll give you something free. The day you left my shop, people came in a way I made more sales that day. What is it about your life? You tell him there is a dimension of grace. Are you following me? There is a dimension of grace. You visit a family and they just tell you we are trusting God. The children have not been moving forward, no admission. And they just say, Lord, we release grace. Let there be an abundant supply of grace. Suddenly you call and hear that two of them are married, two have gotten admission, one is doing his master's work. Grace that brings acceleration. The Bible makes us to understand that Elijah told Ahaz, he says, saddle your ass for I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. Ahaz had gone far while he went back and he sat down praying. The Bible says suddenly when he saw a hand like the fist of a man, he knew that it was the manifestation of that grace. And the Bible says the hand of the Lord came upon him. He tied, he girded his loins and with his bare foot, can you imagine? He ran and overtook the chariots of Ahaz. See, let me tell you something. You will accomplish more this year. You will, I'm, I'm not just prophesying. I'm speaking to you sincerely. You will accomplish more this year. Unlimited dimensions of accomplishments by the Spirit. Many of you who are trusting God to set up structures that can help your family and bring food in the table for you will receive ideas and the enabling grace of the Spirit. You will move with the strength of a nation. One man. The Bible said that there was a man called Samson. That when the hand of the Lord comes upon that man, he will accomplish things. I tell you the truth, Samson was like me. Otherwise, Delilah would not ask him for the source of his strength. If I lift this speaker or that speaker with one hand, you certainly know I did it by grace. Correct? I don't look like the kind of person who would do that. Um... I always say it. I know how God designed me. That's why I don't fight. I only speak the word. I love the kingdom. No fighting. You speak the word. Ah! If we had to use efforts. I prefer to be a Levite. I'll just sit in the temple too fast and meditate. Mediating like, like Anna the prophetess. Hallelujah. Great grace be multiplied unto you. That's what God wants to bring into our lives. And then suddenly because of the manifestation of God's grace, you begin to see beauty and glory in your life like you have never seen. The manifestation of the Spirit, you will begin to... See, I'm telling you, a time will come when people will beg you to touch anything that belongs to them just so that you can release this grace. It will be scary because even you, you will not be able to explain it. Let me use Bishop Oedeko's words. It will be inexplainable but undeniable i love him so much inexplainable so when people ask you and say Wumi, how is this thing happening in your life like this you tell them honestly it's god's grace so many of you who don't have michael smith song go and get it you will need to listen to that song again and again supernatural accomplishments you're just sitting and they just call you and say you have qualified for something in your department I don't have the highest CGPA. The, the exam officer said, it's none of my business. I was given an instruction. Grace. You miss out on a test and they are giving everybody zero and the lecturer looks at you and says, you have been looking at you. Anyway, we are giving a makeup test. Grace. Do you believe what I'm saying? In your place of work, in your endeavors. For me, I'm already enjoying the unlimited dimensions of God's grace. And I told myself, I said, Lord, I will walk in this dimension of grace. I tell you the truth, the favor of God will speak in your life in a way that many people can say this thing is not fair. Ah.
Hallelujah. Repeat after me, I'm well positioned to enjoy great grace. I pray you understand the gravity of what you are saying. Say, I'm well positioned to enjoy great grace. For the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. The grace of the Lord is risen upon you. The grace of the Lord is risen upon you. We arise and shine. The light is come. For glory of the Lord. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For the glory of the Lord. The glory of the Lord is risen upon me. We arise and shine. Our light is come. Oh, the glory of the Lord. The glory of the Lord is risen upon me. I see the glory of the Lord. The glory of the Lord is risen upon me. In the vision that the Lord showed me, I saw right outside here. I saw three cars. One bus, one car that. I thought it was just a bus we we're going to buy and god said the grace there is there's so much responsibility there's grace i saw i saw plenty cars in this place i said lord what is this what 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 are all these cars and god said i will make abundant supply see let me tell you something people will criticize you because you enter realms that they feel you have not you are not qualified to enter it's for the service of the kingdom hallelujah Many of you this year you begin to sow seeds and partner in millions i know it doesn't make sense many of you will literally turn i tell you the truth god himself you will step back into your family and a situation that has eaten your family up satan having his way you say satan i come in with great grace get lost get out of this family and suddenly your dad who has been lying paralyzed almost dying suddenly jacks up great grace is is beyond your prayer life great grace great grace he said great grace was upon the apostles many of you you will run like elijah this is the year when you will run you will run at a speed that is beyond that of your contemporaries grace grace you will sit down and stretch and pray for hours in the spirit study the word for hours in the spirit accomplish things a quickening of your mind by the spirit of god to do impossible things Grace. hallelujah many of you this is the year you will wait by by to carry over forever because grace a mantle of grace will come on you you will run with the spirit of elijah that even when they give a what they call shotgun there will be enabling grace nothing will take you aback you will stand with a stamina that is beyond your mental capacity it's called grace many of you will see increase in your businesses and finances ideas by the spirit in the middle of the night the spirit of god will wake you you will hear a voice from behind saying this is the way this is the way this is the way no don't go this way no go this way direction by the spirit hallelujah many of us this is the year you will experience a performance many of you have never seen the word of god working in your life i know you will say the word works this is the year you will see a performance performance he said but i know whom i have believed and i am persuaded that is able to keep that which I have committed. 
a being confident of this very thing that he which has begun a good work in me he is able to perform it this is the year of the performance you will perform things you will see the manifestation of the word of god i speak it by the spirit according to the abundance of grace that is supplied unto me you will run like elijah in the name of jesus you will move with the spirit of elijah accomplishments by the spirit beyond your age beyond your level of exposure levels of grace like you have never seen grace that will give you vision grace that will cause your words to prosper you will speak and watch your words come alive you will speak and watch it perform it's a season of the performance a season of the performance in your academics a performance in your finances a performance no more struggling no more begging there is a performance by the spirit there is a performance shall be made plain grace in your relationship grace in your marriage grace grace the favor of the Lord 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 bringing it bringing it change like never before there shall be a pastor say in the spirit of God this is the year of the performance of the word of God performance performance the the word of God will no longer be buried in your life it will no longer be buried Hallelujah. There are times in this year when the Lord will tell you, go around Jericho seven times, and He will give you strength beyond your capacity. At the seventh time, He will give you energy to make the shout. And the walls will go down there are other times he will say you don't need to go around stand still and I will show you the salvation of God 
friends I see accomplishments by the spirit this year I see it many of you will hit your target for the year even before half of the year is gone you shall not see wind you shall not see rain yet the valley shall be filled with water the grace of God will place some of you this year in the presence of kings and nobles people you offices you never would have entered hear me mark my word I'm speaking by the spirit the grace of God will take many of you and place you in positions where men can bless you many of you the grace of God will open the doors of nations for you beyond Nigeria beyond Nigeria it's called grace hallelujah as a family of faith we will run corporately with a dimension of grace that will make many of you afraid can I tell you something in the vision that the Lord showed me I saw a lot of criticisms because a time came because of the performance of God some of you looking at me now even became skeptical and began to say Kai are we really sure that this level of increase and expansion is the hand of God some of you looking at me that's why we are praying because you will see things that are beyond the manifestations of men God will do it even by his spirit many of you God will literally alter the state of your families I mean you are in a dunghill today tomorrow you are in a palace by the spirit of God in spite of the fact that it looks like there is turbulence around the nation can I tell you something the agenda of God has not changed this country is about to see the grace of God in a fearful way I feel sorry for those who feel this country will be divided there's no time I would have shown you in Isaiah 18 Nigeria right there Nigeria is in the Bible it wasn't Lord Lugard that brought Nigeria together it was a definite orchestration of the Spirit of God and who shall speak a thing and it comes to pass when God has not declared it but friends our job tonight or my job tonight is to stir up the spirit of faith in you to understand that we are going to be operating principally in two dimensions of grace one the favor of God this is the season when God will arise and have mercy upon his Zion for the time see let me tell you the grace of God will restore things to many of you that you never believe you will get back restore years of tears he said and I will restore all the years not some all the years that the canker worm the caterpillar the palmer worm the performance of the spirit times where you were delayed at home and you couldn't go to school there is a payback the Lord himself times where you would have compromised you suffered for standing in for the truth the Lord is about to roar from heaven and pour upon you grace Great grace for many of us in ministry who have been quietly building through the years this is the year of the performance where the Lord himself will pick you nobody will be able to shut any door against you because before you step in God himself will open the door this is the year when we'll call on one person and a nation will answer watch unbelievers partner with the agenda of God in a way that you have never seen with their, with their finance with access, with endorsement with everything do you believe this? do you believe this? because the Bible says blessed is she that believes for unto her there shall be a performance, the performance is only for them that believe I've taken out time 
to soak it in my spirit and I said Lord I believe it's an awesome man and, and I'm excited about it hallelujah I'll be sharing with us certain things that God shared with me as we continue two of them will shock you one is the mystery of something the Bible calls the key of David two places in the Bible where God said something about the key of David I began to say what is it about the key of David and then the blessings of Abraham no many of us know the no 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 we are going to share on what the Bible calls the blessings of Abraham and then you will understand by my revelation that outside of Abraham, everybody is an illegal occupant on the earth right now. <laughs> mm. Thank you, Jesus. Let's finish this scripture so we can round up. Second Peter 1, verse 2. Thank you. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you. Are you ready? Are you there? All right, let's read again. One to read. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you. How? Stop. How? So how is grace and peace multiplied? Through the knowledge. As you expose yourself to the revelatory knowledge of the Christ, you find out that you are walking in abundance of grace. Are you saying that it's not just the issue of claiming? There is knowledge that brings grace. Are you listening to me? He said, grace and peace be multiplied through the knowledge. Through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. So there is a dimension of knowledge and understanding that causes grace to be multiplied in your life. Are you listening to me? There are things that God has shared with me over the last one month. I have cried like a baby and I kept laughing at myself I felt so embarrassed when you know sometimes when people look at you and say Kai you are matured spiritually when God began to open me up to truths higher truths and greater lights of the kingdom I just looked at myself and said oh my God can you imagine the grace of God is multiplied according to the abundance of knowledge that is granted unto you hallelujah so two people can see a challenge and one will walk through it as though nothing exists and the other one will stand there say after me knowledge this is a time when you will brace up i listened to all the eni messages for last year all it was part of my retreat i was listening to the man of god preaching and ministering to me are you listening to me I listened to it I soaked it I prayed my life out and I said Lord all the blessings that you have spoken through your servant last year I receive it there is a difference between judge the person and when the grace of God comes when you know that difference it will help you to know when you are a minister and when you are you there are times that God will use the minister in you to speak to you and if you know that difference some of you will just be praying and suddenly the ministerial anointing will come upon you and you begin to prophesy your solution by yourself. And if you do not have enough discernment to realize when the spirit is upon you in power, you will miss out on several things. Are you following me now? And so this is a time of unlimited grace. Brothers and sisters, there is so much to do for the kingdom this year. We'll be announcing some of our activities but there is so much for the kingdom i have this to tell you do not be surprised at whatever you see in your life and especially in this place you are witnesses that we love god and we fear him sincerely but you are about to see a performance of divinity through men that will shock you that will dwarf every accomplishment for the kingdom you will see so winning strategies in a way that will shock you ways that we will win souls this year for the kingdom hallelujah i prayed and i told god greater grace to be able to establish people in the truth 
this year we are not interested in just doing ministry and coming on friday and just getting excited it's my goal this year that if anyone is picked at random you can be able to represent the kingdom and speak in power and light where it is not just a select few are you following me now i was so blessed hearing abraham's testimony the gentleman who shared the testimony here was a drug addict was into all kinds of things but today is blood washed spirit filled loves the lord winning souls that's the kind of testimony where the least among us becomes as great as david doing great things for the kingdom let me tell you friends god will be engaging everybody in this place this year this is not the year to sit down and watch for many of you your ministry this year will start from facebook god will just commission you to start doing something on facebook sending daily scriptures to people are you listening to me some of you your ministry will start on what they call that thing that people can almost hit themselves on the wall because to go are you listening to me many of you your ministry this year will be to be a link man between where there is revelation and where there is need for it so prepare to embrace it's not you must have a ministry joshua selman international ministry a place of power and miracles no and he said that's my secretary that's my PA. Mm -mm. it's going to be an engaging year are you listening to me for many of you god will give you the responsibility to begin to study on kingdom finances and go and hold a seminar for your father and mother and change their lives for many of you this will be the year where you have a project to make sure your paralyzed father is back on his feet for many of you god will engage you you will pray fast and prepare yourself until your father gets born again god will do for him what he did for saul he will drink juice and as he's going to the kitchen to keep the cup he will see a light like saul saw it and god will say you can't kick against the priest it's time up are you listening to me Renard Bonke calls it evangelism by fire. This is a year when you do a lot of things. Many of you will begin to write articles by the Spirit. The inspiration of the kingdom will come upon you. You will begin to write articles. Before you know it, a media house will call you. And see, this is a year of limitless possibilities. Doing great things for the kingdom. Many of you will begin to write tracts and translate it in Hausa. And send it to Funtua, send it to places. We are not the kind of ministry that believes that people should sit down. We are the only one. No, everybody, you are we are the gifts that equip the ministers. Are you listening to me? This is the year when God will do surprising things. For many of you, this is the year when you begin to hold prayers for your class members. That's how you will start. You drag all of them plus the drunkards. Let's go to court. And then you pray and tell them Jesus loves you. The guy has been looking for you. He's always coming around you. And one day you say, okay, sit down. You get two chairs. And wash out Babylon out of him. And then when you do that, you tell him you are the first member of this class meeting. We are going to be meeting once a week and pray over our academics. You will be calling the people for the prayer. You are the one who will be giving you recharge card. Are you listening to me for some of you your ministry will be this year to go and speak to all the people who are all the market people that you go and buy something from that every time you buy you talk to them i'm saying this is a year when god is not just giving us grace to be rich and to be smiling because there's greater responsibility are you listening to me rise up on your feet we're going to pray and then we are done there will be a series of teachings this year there will be many activities. Brace up yourself. Are you listening to me? Concerning the security situation in the country, I bring you a word of the Lord. All those who perpetrate evil in this country, their days are numbered. Their days are numbered. Are you listening to me? Their days are numbered. God is about to reveal himself in this country as the man of war. That man that revelation said he rides upon a white horse and out of his mouth a double-edged sword proceeds. People will sleep in this country and not wake up again. 
without the interference of any man the lord of sabaoth will arise by himself in this country so i bring you a message of hope whether you live in kano or meduguri or abuja or kaduna fear not fear not god is faithful and god will help us are you listening to me we are going to take five to ten minutes to pray in the spirit in light of the prophetic word and you're just going to pray and say you are positioning yourself are we ready to do that are you ready to do that hold your hands all over in this building and let's begin to pray in the spirit Come on, pray. We are aligning with prophecy. We position our spirits for great grace. And I will fill this house with my glory. We receive grace. We Shake Hallelujah. Now listen. You're going to prophesy favor to all the 12 calendar months in your life this year. Are you listening? 
you're going to say from this meeting tonight you are walking in on the, one of the things that will characterize our lives corporately is the fearful operation of the favor of god you will hear testimonies of the grace and the favor of god so we are praying right now for that dimension called favor are you ready to pray go ahead and speak thou shall arise and have mercy upon zion for the time to favor her yea the set time All kinds of favor. My life is an open gate receiving the favor of God. Beyond our prayer life, oh, beyond our word life, yeah. by the sure mercies of the God of David, by the sure mercies of the God of David, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen to me. Hallelujah. Many of us have been held back by certain mistakes of the past and challenges of the past. And every time God speaks a word like this, whenever we want to take steps, guilt brings us back. Can I tell you something? It's by the grace of God. The mercy of God speaks for you. Are you listening to me? This is not the year to allow Satan speak to you and say you that last year you have been sleeping around from January to December. There is therefore now. Now. There was yesterday. There is therefore now. No condemnation. Are you listening to me? When Satan reminds you of your past, remind him of his future. Satan's past is better than his future. As a horrible life. That your best is behind you. And you know it. Hallelujah. And right around say, God, I need your enablement to go through this year. Listen. This is not the year when by February, 
what you used to believe and jump about in january suddenly becomes foolishness there are many believers who start with vigor but because we don't have the enabling grace and the staying power when certain things just move against seemingly what the word of god says should be many of us begin to waver hallelujah but you are going to pray for enablement many of us in school are going to take courses you know that because of the asu strike there's already a lag and when you resume there's going to be a lot of work many of us are in final year and you need to catch up with a lot of things you need grace many of us are master students some of us are phd students you need enabling grace are you following me now we need grace combining your academics with service and some of you are working and are doing other things grace you're going to say lord a supernatural enablement that i will do more than my bare hands can do lift up your voice and pray Enabling grace. Pray it in your life. Grace. That supplies power to move beyond my human capacity. The power to think beyond your human capacity. The power to speak beyond your human capacity. The power to move and to accomplish things beyond your human capacity. Come on, pray. Pray. Pray upon your mind. Shalabada bada. Break the power. 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 Break Break in the name of Jesus. Grace not to be destroyed. Grace not to be destroyed. Not Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. This is the year when we will stand as light. Are you listening to me? There's no more silence. There's no trying to be nice. No. This is the year where we will step out in light. And this is who we are. This is who we represent. This is what we carry. This is what we can do. Grace to say no. That even if a thousand people are saying yes to what is against the principles of God. You will stand and say no. Grace to face the crowd and say no. The Bible says the grace of God has appeared unto all men. Teaching us to say no. There is grace to say no. Everything cannot be yes in 2012. Many of us yet said yes to everything in 2011. And we landed into trouble. Grace. Grace to say no to your emotions when God wants to speak to you. 
and you are tired. Many of us will need to stay awake for hours and sleep only a few times. It takes grace, otherwise we'll break down. There's grace. It's not the year to get sick. There's too much work to be done. Are you listening to me? It's not the year to sit down and negotiate with Satan. I say, okay, Satan, let's, let me rest in January. You can, no! No matter how mad a man is, he knows what fire is. No matter how mad a man is, he knows what fire is. I've never seen a madman go near fire in the name of madness. As mad as he is, his, his, his senses, his neurons are still working. He goes near fire. The Bible says he maketh his angels, uh, spirits, and his ministers flames of fire. It's not the time to sit down and organize prayer sessions for Satan. We will stamp on him and move. There's work to be done. There's work to be done. Are you listening to me? Somebody calls you and says, I'm just announcing to you that this year will be a bad year. Tell him, thank you. I feel sorry for you. And you will not even pray about it. You go and concentrate and do something better. This is a year where you hear, you have a dream. And in dream, you see that every member of your family died. And you get up and say, Lord, I give you thanks. You are more than worthy to be praised. And you just continue your work no depression whatsoever this is the year where someone looks at you and says you are good for nothing tell him you, your words doesn't really matter my destiny just have a nice day I'm not offended you can have a glorious day not telling me I will talk to you you are above anybody that tries to tell you just say I'm above I'm too serious I'm too focused on the things above to distract myself with the things that are below are you listening to me? This is not the year to start talking and say, hey, people are saying this. Have you heard people are saying, what is your... Ah, you, you are, there is work to be done. Are you listening to me? Father, we thank you for this year. It's a season of great grace and glory. We will accomplish more for the kingdom this year than we have all through our lives. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In one minute, I'd like you to just pray for Koinonia this year. Pray for the house. Go ahead and pray. Say, Lord, accomplishments. Pray for the ministers. Stay in grace. Pray that we we'll teach truth in righteousness. No perversion of truth. Pray for grace. As we travel all around the country, pray for grace. Pray for all the people who will be coming. Pray for the hundreds and thousands who will be saved this year who will be healed this year pray for all our miracle services lord we have seen your hand last year greater manifestations this is the year when when you invite someone for the miracle service before he arrives god will use your hand to rock the miracle for him he will just come to testify pray Pray against the spirit of destruction. Go ahead and pray. Pray against the spirit of deception. Pray against error that will teach the truth of Christ with accuracy and power. Pray for transformation. Go ahead and pray. Say, Lord, we pray for every single one that there will be true transformation that will not just be doing church will not just be doing religion but that will truly be growing conforming to the image and the character of Christ and manifesting his grace and glory even in our daily lives pray for all our projects accomplishments by the spirit hallelujah hallelujah hopefully by next week or in two weeks time who we'll announce officially the activities we have for the year hallelujah i just like you to brace up and um, use this time the school you know as a believer you can make everything work out for your good is that correct there are many people who have maximized the asu strike and it has been a great ladder for them spiritually are you following me we pray that soon enough the federal government will get into reasonable negotiations with asu hallelujah but while that is happening use the opportunity before assignments and other things begin to come are you listening to me eat 
for the journey is far now is the time to get books now is the time to settle down are you listening to me many of us are around there's not much that we're doing in the day you can hang around in the night you can go to your rooms share the word together build yourself explore grace hallelujah a major book i'd like you to read this year is um unmerited favor by joseph prince if you can get a hold of it unmerited favor by joseph prince it's going to be a major book that will help you the emergence of the glorious church bishop david oedeko the emergence the glorious church hallelujah and any kingdom series by dr miles munro anyone really just anyone will bless you anyone by dr miles munro will bring some other books as dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.